Hello, factlings, factoids, fact heads, fact machines, and mother factors. I haven't decided on a name for you guys yet, so just pick one of those. Welcome to 101 Facts. I'm Sam, and I'm here to talk to you today about one of the biggest rodent related phenomenon in the world. And no, I'm not talking about Richard Gere. It's been around for nearly 100 years, bringing joy and pretty heavy trauma to generations of children and adults who don't want to admit that they're crying. Yes, it's probably something in their eye. I'm talking about Disney, the multi-billion dollar funhouse made of theme parks, movies and TV. But is there 101 facts about them? Well, yes, yes there are. So get ready to skip the queue, buckle up and ride the fact mountain. This is 101 facts about Disney. Number one. Unless you're blind, deaf, and have absolutely no cultural awareness whatsoever, you'll know that the Walt Disney Company is a huge entertainment conglomerate that's been around since 1923. Number two. As of 2014, the Walt Disney Company has over $84 billion worth of assets, which is enough to buy maybe three Mickey Mouse hats at one of their stores. Number three. Just some of these assets include Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment, Touchstone Pictures, Hollywood Pictures, Disney Tune Studios, ESPN, Club Penguin, ABC Television Network, Walt Disney Records, Hollywood Records, Lyric Street Records, Disney Channel. Number four. Disney Cruise Line. Disney On Ice. Babyzone.com. Oh, f me. Is there anything they don't own? This is exhausting. I'm not even on number five yet. Number five. Disney is the second largest media conglomerate in the world, second only to Comcast, who don't even have their own mascot, so I don't know why they're so high up on the list. Number six. Disney also now owns some of the biggest franchises and studios in the world, including Pixar, The Muppets, Star Wars, and Marvel Studios. But perhaps we'll go into those in another video. In fact, maybe I already have. Click there, find out. Number seven. But this whole Disney adventure starts with a man named Walt. Oh god, no, not that one. I mean, Walter Disney. Number eight. Walter Disney paraded into the world in Chicago in 1901 to his parents Elias and Flora Disney. Number nine. The Disney family name is actually an anglicised, aka made more Englisher, version of the French surname Disney, which somehow sounds a bit more pretentious. It's probably the apostrophe. Number ten. In fact, Walt was a descendant of Robert Disney, who, uh, travelled to England with William the Conqueror in 1066. Good job they, you know, rebranded themselves or the newspapers would be on that like yellow on butter. Number 11. Disney dropped out of high school at age 16 to join the army, where he met a mouse called Mickey who provided him with ammo in the trenches. Okay, that, that last bit wasn't true. He actually got rejected from the army and he joined the Red Cross instead. But that would have been a hell of a story, wouldn't it? Number 12. Disney first founded the laugh gram studio, where he made short animated films based on fairy tales. He took six months to make his first effort, Little Red Riding Hood. Wow, it looks like Disney started drawing my life. Number 13. It was hard to begin with for the company to make enough bank. In fact, Disney lived in the offices and took baths at the local train station. Which sounds incredibly dangerous. Number 14. Laughograms weren't laugh-o-gramming for much longer as the company soon became bankorrupt in 1923. Walt sold his camera for a one-way train fare to a little place called Hollywood. B -b 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 Hollywood. Number 15. Something good did come out of the Laughogram studio though, and that was the inspiration for the world's most famous mouse. I promise I'm not lying this time. At the studios he found a brown mouse who he kept and trained, and being an artist he did the natural thing and drew a picture of it, christening the mousy chap Mortimer Mouse. He may or may not have changed the name later. Number 16. Disney created other characters including Alice of Alice's Comedies and Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, which were reasonably successful once he hit the Hollywood Hills. Not literally hit. That would hurt. Number 17. But it was that Mickey Mouse fella who made him the big bucks. Mickey was brought in to replace Oswald the Lucky Rabbit after they lost the rights to the character to those evil loons at Universal. I bet they all talk with evil British accents over there. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Number 18. The actor Mickey Rooney claims that he inspired Walt Disney to name the big-eared buck generator Mickey, but this was debunked as historians claim the two never actually met each other. Awkward. Number 19. Mickey's first appearance was in 1928 in Steamboat Willie. <laughs> oh, come on, grow up. Number 20. Mickey only has four fingers on each of his hands because apparently that saved the company money in animation. I've actually recently gotten rid of both my thumbs, and actually I must say my credit rating has gone up and up. Number 21. 
Mickey didn't actually squeak a word until the film The Carnival Kid. He spelled that wrong, did anyone notice? In 1929, when he said, Hot dogs, hot dogs! Well, it's better than your first words. Number 22. Walt Disney himself would sometimes voice Mickey, but he's been voiced by many others over the years, including by young Santa Claus lookalike Wayne Allwine, who was married to Russie Taylor, who provided Mickey's wife Minnie's voice for a number of years. So Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse are actually married in real life too. Aww. Number 23. Ever since then, Mickey has appeared in many, many films, often hidden in plain sight. Some Disney films have hidden Mickeys in them, where Mickey's head and trademark ears are somehow disguised in the frame. Why not watch all Disney films and tell us how many you can spot and send your answers on a postcard to 101 Facts, P.O. Box 101, London Town. Number 24. Walt Disney won an honorary Oscar for the creation of Mickey in 1932. Number 25. Five years later, Walt Disney Productions released their first feature-length motion picture, the Snow White and the Huntsman ripoff, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Number 26. One of those dwarfs is called Dopey, which is kind of bullying really, but we'll just leave that to the dwarves HR department. It's rumoured that some of the people were against using the name Dopey because it was too modern a word for a classic fairy tale. Walt Disney reassured the naysayers that William Shakespeare had actually used the word in a play of his. However, the word Dopey has never been found in any of the bard's work. Number 27. Snow White won a special Oscar made up of one normal sized Oscar and seven little ones. So technically, it kind of won eight. Technically. Number 28. Adjusting for inflation, Snow White is the highest grossing animated film of all time. It certainly has its fans. It was the favourite film of thousands of people, including Charlie Chaplin and uh, Adolf Hitler. Maybe it was just appealing to people with that moustache. Don't know. Number 29. Snow White is just one of the lineup of Disney's princesses, like a regal and more fabulous Avengers. The current official roster is Ariel, Cinderella, Tiana, Rapunzel, Belle, Jasmine, Jennifer Lawrence, Aurora, Merida, Snow White, Mulan, and Pocahontas. Okay, I may have included someone else in there by accident, but she's my princess. Anna and Elsa are said to be added soon, but the progress on their coronation is said to be frozen. Get it? Get it? Number 30. In order for a character to be crowned a Disney princess, they need to A, be fictional, B, be owned by Disney, and C, be coronated at an official ceremony held at Disneyland. Oh, I'm so close, I've got two out of three of those. Number 31. Most of the princesses are actually teenagers. For example, Snow White, the youngest of the lot, is actually only 14. Number 32. Walt Disney's favorite piece of animation was when Cinderella's dress transforms. It's weird, that's exactly what happens to me when I get up in the morning. Number 33. Speaking of princesses, here's a film that has nothing to do with them. Pinocchio was Disney's second feature, released in 1940. In 1993, Playboy of all things condemned Pinocchio for having 23 acts of battery, 9 acts of property damage, 3 instances of swearing, 2 shots of male nudity, and 1 implied death. It's like a horrible 12 days of Christmas, isn't it? Number 34. Despite Playboy saying the film needed a healthy helping of Jesus, the film was a critical success, at the time and even now in the age of the internet. It's one of the only films to have a 100% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. 100%! Mind you, that's 1% less than the amount that I love you guys. Number 35. Also released in 1940 was Disney's first live-action animation hybrid Fantasia, a collection of animated stories set to great works of orchestral music. Number 36. Fantasia's sorcerer Yen Sid was based on Walt Disney himself. The glaring look he gives Mickey was based on the look that Walt gave the animators when he was unhappy with their work. Also, here's another clue. Look at what Yen Sid spells backwards. Yeah. Seem familiar? Number 37. <laughs> Jiminy f***ing Jellicas! What the hell were they on when they made this? Quite rightfully, this sequence received many, many complaints from parents, saying it disturbed or even traumatised their children. Number 38. Alright, I'm going to level with you here right now. Disney has been involved with creating and distributing over 500 motion pictures to date, so if you do the mathematics on that, 101 ain't going to cover them all. So if I miss out your favourite, please don't inundate us with tear-stained letters, as then that will make us cry, and then you'll be crying, and we'll be crying, and it'll just be a complete state. Number 39. The 1940s also saw the release of the Tusky High Flyer Dumbo, Oh dear -a -thon Bambi, and The Song of the South, which was the inspiration for the theme park ride Splash Mountain. Number 40. Mother! 
I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. It's just a tear gas grenade that's been thrown in here, honestly, it's... it's horrible. Apparently the tragic reason for this ever being in the film in the first place was explained by animator Don Han, who said it was because Disney's mother died in 1938 after a gas leak in the house that Disney had bought for his parents. Number 41. Somewhat predictably, along came the 1950s after the 40s, and with it came a whole pumpkin carriage load of new Disney movies, including Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, Sleeping Beauty, Lady and the Tramp, and Cinderella. The meaning of life. Word on the street was that Cinderella was a massive gamble for Disney, and that if it failed, Disney's company would have burnt to cinders. <laughs> See what I did there, Cinderella? Cinders. The budget for the movie was $3 million, and if it didn't make big profits, the studio would go under. Luckily, it proved a big $263 million flavoured hit. Number 43! 309 girls went for the role of Cinderella, but it eventually went to Eileen Woods, who got it without being aware she was even auditioning. Walt Disney was sent recordings of her singing by her friends without her even knowing. Gosh, I, I hope nobody does the same to me one day. I'd hate to be the voice of a Disney movie. Hi! Number 44. Alice and Her Wonderland did not fare quite as well as Cinder's did, earning just $5 million in comparison, with many writing critics deriding it for Americanizing a British classic novel. What a load of wibbly, bim bobbling Nazwax. Number 45! You know a film is successful after it has its very own syndrome named after it, and Peter Pan has exactly that. Peter Pan syndrome, otherwise known by its Latin and more clever club's name, Pure Eternus, is when an adult man retains an adolescent emotional state. A famous supposed sufferer of this was Michael Jackson. Speak of the devil. Number 46. Peter Pan is Michael Jackson's favourite film ever, to the point that he named his ranch Neverland. With Michael Jackson being a fan of a film in which youth is eternal for a young boy, I'm sure you can insert your own joke there somewhere if you want to. Number 47! Walt Disney was originally dissatisfied with Peter Pan's character because he felt he was too cold and unlikable. Yeah, what a dick. Number 48. In 1955, canine lovers who populated a way to eat spaghetti romantically that literally everybody fails to do with any grace, featured in a film called Lady and the Tramp. This dog here, called Trusty, was meant to be dead at the end of this scene, but Walt Disney said that this would be too traumatic, especially after Bambi's mother killing scene, so he made the animators add a scene in at the end, where we see him with just a broken leg. Number 49. Can someone do this for me for Christmas? Please. Please? Number 50. Another gift came into the world in 1955 too, one that brought joy and merriment to everybody around the world. I mean, yes, there is him, but actually I meant it in 1955, Disneyland was born. Number 51. The idea of Disneyland came to Disney himself when he was watching his daughters on a merry-go-round, probably having the uh, time of their lives, like everyone does on a merry-go-round. Number 52. When it first opened, the theme park had 18 attractions, similar to me when I walk in a room. Nowadays, across six resorts and 12 parks, Disneyland has had over 330 attractions. Number 53. Opening day for Disneyland was an absolute cluster F. There was a gas leak closing three areas of the park, there was also no working water fountains, half the people there had bought counterfeit tickets, and it was so hot that the tarmac on the roads was melting. Just remember that next time you have a bad day. Number 54. In Disneyland's first year as a newborn theme park, a ticket for an adult cost $10.75. These days it costs just 99 cents. Psych, close that booking page, it's actually $99. Sorry, couldn't resist. Tee hee. Number 55. A million people visited the land of Disney in its inaugural year of 1955, and since then it's been growing and growing, with 16.7 million people skipping their legs through the gates in 2014. Number 56. If you're ever at Disneyland and you hear someone refer to a code V, be careful where you step next, because someone has just chucked their lunch up. A fact and advice for you at the same time. What a service we provide. Number 57. There is no alcohol served at the Disneyland park, I know, boring, except for at one place. A secret club called Club 33 is in the middle of Disneyland park, but membership is by invite only, unless you want to pay $10,000 a year for the pleasure and wait on an 800 person long waiting list. I think I'll just get drunk and watch the Disney Channel at home in my pants, thank you very much. Number 58. There are now Disney parks in North America, Asia and Europe, so the sun is always shining on a Disney theme park. That is, unless the sun's exploded, in which case we'd all be dead, and that's probably a more pressing concern. Number 59. Next up came the swinging 60s, and in it Disney and team threw a few more films at the world, including Swiss Family Robinson, The Sword in the Stone, Mary Poppins, The Jungle Book, and 101 Dalmatians, which I almost did this video by simply naming the characters of. Number 60. 
Mary Poppins, what's that? <laughs> Alan, I'm glad you asked. Mary Poppins is another one of those Disney films to have 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, adapted from author P. L. Travers's book. Number 61. It also won five Oscars. No Disney film since has won that many. Lucky she's got that big Time Lord bag to keep them in. Number 62. The song Feed the Birds is said to be Walt Disney's favourite song. Number 63. 101 Dalmatians was released in 1961. Somebody, admittedly with far too much time on their hands, and no, it wasn't me, you cheeky git, counted all the spots frame by frame and got a total of 6,469,952. So, on average, the same amount as a Clearasil advert. Nintendo, I mean number 64. 101 Dalmatians was also the highest earning movie of 1961 in the US. Number 65. The Jungle Book, released in 1967, was the first film to be released after Walt Disney's death, and it was one of the last films he specifically worked on. Number 66. These vultures were meant to be voiced by the Beatles, but they declined. They were even designed to look like them, except for, you know, the wings. Only one of the Beatles ended up having wings in the end. Number 67. The actor who provided the voice of Mowgli, Bruce Ritherman, is now a wildlife documentary maker. Whether he still wears those little red pants is a mystery. Number 68. Disney's death sadly came in December of 1966 from lung cancer. It said the last words he'd ever written were found on a note in his office, simply reading Kurt Russell. Nobody knows why, perhaps it was a simple memo or a confession of his murderer! No, his, his murderer was lung cancer, but worth a try. Number 69. In the 1960s, controversial writer Harlan Ellison was employed by Disney to work on a script. But he made the key error we all make on the first day of a new job by suggesting a pornographic Disney movie, before doing impersonations of all the characters in that movie, including a rather graphic description of what the seven dwarves were doing to a particular mouse. He was fired after four hours. I'm just going to try and unsend an email pitch I sent to Disney earlier. Cancel the email, cancel the email. Number 70. There's an urban myth that Disney's body was cryogenically frozen and is now kept behind the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland. If it's true and he's later unfrozen, then hello Walt, welcome to the future! It's nothing like Tomorrowland, unfortunately. Number 71. The 1970s brought a Mickey Mouse earload of movies from Disney, including the Aristocats, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Robin Hood, The Rescuers, Pete's Dragon, and The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which was Winnie's feature-length debut. Number 72. Bedknobs and Broomsticks were so heavily animated that every single frame had to be storyboarded, restricting the actor's freedom to move around. At least that bed looks quite comfy. Number 73. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but none of Robin Hood's characters are actually human. This was the first animated Disney film to have no human characters appear at all. Number 74. The character of the Scat Cat, oh come on, it's a type of jazz, you've been on the internet for too long, was based on wonderful world thinker Louis Armstrong and was going to be voiced by him too. However, he dropped out due to illness. Number 75. The Rescuers has a certain level of infamy to it as in some VHS versions, it contains an image of a topless lady. It's kind of her fault, really, for not closing the curtains when there are clearly two mice trying to fly past. Amateur. Number 76. Like everybody did in the age of Duran Duran and Aha, Disney started to experiment with some wacky stuff in the 1980s. For instance, they dabbled in their first horror film, The Watcher in the Woods, and tried, but didn't inhale, SFX Innovation with Tron. Also included in their 80s releases were The Fox and the Hound, Oliver and Company, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and The Little Mermaid. Number 77. The original title of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was Teeny Weenies, but it was rejected for sounding too childish. It feels weird to say as well, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. Teeny Weenies. Number 78. For Oliver and Company in 1988, Disney invested in their own computer animation system called CAPS for 11 minutes of computer-assisted animation. I told you they started experimenting. Number 79. For reference, the animators took photos of New York from 18 inches off the ground in order to get a dog or a cat's perspective. They are brave for getting that close to the floor in New York. I'd need to shower for about three weeks afterwards. Number 80. For The Little Mermaid, the animators drew a total of over one million drawings using over a thousand different colours. I hope they stayed within the lines. It's very hard to. Number 81. Over a million bubbles were also drawn for the movie too. So many, in fact, that they had to outsource some of the bubble making to a company in China called Pacific Rim. Today we are cancelling the apocalypse! Not that Pacific Rim. Number 82. Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Donald and Kermit the Frog all make cameos in The Little Mermaid. Under the sea, downward. Oh come on, that was a good Kermit the Frog. Number 83. The 1990s was known as the Disney Decade and saw Disney burst at the proverbial seams with collaborative film projects and the purchase of Pixar, but that, my little factlings, is one for another day. 
In the meantime, a whole load of Disney classics were released, including Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, Mulan, and Tarzan. Number 84. At this time, Disney entered the sports game, buying a hockey team and naming it the Mighty Ducks to coincide with the movie, and a baseball team that they renamed the Anaheim Angels. With the amount of fat stacks that Disney have, they can probably afford to make their own sport. Number 85. The Mickey Mouse Club, a children's variety television program, was relaunched in 1989, but it's the 1993 version that's famous for launching many showbiz careers, including constant stare of Ryan Gosling, walking school uniform advertisement Britney Spears, and bacophile Justin Timberlake. Number 86. The sadly late Robin Williams performed the voice of the genie in Aladdin. He improvised so many lines using his incredible comedic brain box that the team had over 16 hours of material from him. Number 87. Apart from when Up came along later in 2009, Beauty and the Beast is the only animated film to be nominated for the Best Picture Academy Award in history. And it was about time too. Hey, eh, Cogsworth? Hey, eh, time? Your clock? Number 88. Mulan and Avatar, sorry, I mean Pocahontas, are the only Disney films to be based on true stories. So yes, sadly, that means that Tron never happened. In fact, Pocahontas premiered around the 400th anniversary of the birth of the real Pocahontas. Number 89. The wildebeest stampede that tramples over poor Lion King Mufasa like a candy wrapper in a riot took more than two years to animate using a new CGI program. Number 90. The Lion King was the highest grossing animated movie of all time. That is, until Elsa got her mitts on the prize with the obviously nowhere near as good Frozen. I mean, that's not an opinion, that's, you know, an actual fact, right? Now Simba and Co are at number 4, beaten to the punch once again by Toy Story 3 and the Minions. Number 91 Since 2000, Disney had been jolly busy and released over 150 films, including the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise and Tomorrowland, both of which were based on Disneyland rides. Number 92 the fourth Pirates film on Stranger Tides is still the most expensive movie ever made, with production costs reportedly being over $410 million. Number 93. Chicken Little was released in 2005 and was the first Disney-made film to be entirely comprised of CGI. Number 94. The Princess and the Frog made history as Disney's first film with a black heroine. Bootylicious single lady enthusiast Beyonce was considered for the role of Tiana, but she refused to audition and so didn't get the part. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Number 95. It wasn't all roses and or peaches and cream for Disney during this time though, as they also released Mars Needs Mums, The Lone Ranger and John Carter, all of which are in the top 5 box office bombs of all time, losing Disney an estimated $390 million. Metaphor alert. Metaphor alert. Metaphor alert. Number 96. The frames in this scene of Bane of Every Recent Parent's Life Frozen took over 132 hours to render and complete each. I bet after all that was done, the animators just wanted to... Let it go? <laughs> Number 97! In 2009, Disney bought Marvel Studios for $4.24 billion. Half of that is just Tony Stark's salary, I imagine. Number 98! Disney also collaborated with games company Square Enix for the Kingdom Hearts series, an anime and Disney mashup series of video games featuring Donald Duck and Goofy and many others as interactive characters. It's a key purchase for any Disney fan. Oh, come on, I just had to. Number 99! Every two years, Disney now even has its own Comic-Con. Well, sort of. It's called D23 and it's the ultimate fan convention, full of announcements and fans cosplaying as their favourite characters. I was congratulated on my Gaston costume last year, despite the fact I didn't even dress up. Number 100! Disney now have over 40 films on their Mickey Mouse flavoured slate to be released up until 2020, including live-action remakes and spin-offs of Beauty and the Beast, Cruella de Vil, Tinkerbell and... Night on Bald Mountain? Oh man, I'll have to bring a new pair of trousers with me to that one. Number 101! Disney are planning to build two huge domes at the top of the planet so that from a distance, Earth resembles Mickey Mouse's head. This isn't official yet, in fact, I just made it up. But it's definitely going to happen at some point, isn't it? Well that was 101 facts about Disney, and I don't know about you, but I had a lovely time. Whew, we were packed to the rafters there a little, weren't we? Oh. I'll tell you what, if I missed out your favourite Disney film, then comment below asking very nicely and perhaps I can squeeze them into a different video. If you want the latest in fact spewing nonsense, then click on the terrifying Bald Mountain Demon to subscribe and purge your fears all at the same time. We also have some lovely other delectable delights for your viewing pleasure, including facts about Jimmy Bond, the internet thing, Chewie and Friends, and your deepest dreams. Click on them now and you can watch them. That's exciting. Doing this video made me think, Disney gave me unrealistic expectations of like, everything as a kid. I thought mice would be able to dance and wear robes and be my friend, but instead they just bit me. Same with ducks as well. And weirdly, genies. All of them all bit me. I mean, that guy said he was a genie anyway, but now that I think of it, he...
He lived behind McDonald's, I think. So, hmm. Maybe I should go to hospital and get that checked out. Hmm. See you next time!